Hello everyone, in today's session I'm going to give you the easy explanation of the short story A Living God written by Patrick Lovecardio Hearn, also known by his Japanese name Koizumi Yakumo. He resigned from his job and became a Japanese citizen adopting the name Koizumi Yakumo and through his works Koizumi Yakumo has acquainted the world with Japanese customs, religion and the literature of Japan. This is important. The present narrative is an excerpt from his book Gleanings in Buddha Fields 1897. Now, this is the summary of this short story. Go through the summary before starting the analysis. Hearns, a living god, tells the story of a tsunami affecting a village of farmers along the Japanese coast. This is the setting and what is the context? This story tells us about a tsunami affecting a village of farmers. A rich farmer, Hamaguchi Gohei. Hamaguchi Gohei is the protagonist, is the hero of this story and he saves his people. And how does he save his people? He saves his people by setting precious crops on fire so that they can see the smoke and hurry to a safe place. His grandson thought that he had become mad. But Hamaguchi paid no attention as his plan was successful and he had saved the villagers. The influential resident of the village, Hamaguchi Gohei, was the influential resident of the village living in a farmhouse virtually disconnected from his people is now the god that lives in great honor among them all. The story of Hamaguchi is an account of sacrifice, self-action and presence of mind very very important. Do check the pin comment section for the MCQs and the very first question in my MCQ worksheet is directly taken from this line. From immemorial time, the shores of Japan have been swept at irregular intervals of centuries by enormous tidal waves, enormous huge tidal waves caused by earthquakes or by submarine volcanic action. So from a very long period of time, the shores of Japan are prone to tsunamis. What are tsunamis? Tsunamis are huge tidal waves caused by earthquakes or by volcanoes that take place underwater. These awful, these dreadful sudden risings of the sea are called by the Japanese tsunami. The last one occurred on the evening of June 17, 1896 and this tsunami was destructive. When a wave nearly 200 miles long struck, the northeastern provinces of Miyagi, Iwate, Aomori. Learn these names for your multiple choice question. Wrecking, destroying, scores of towns and villages, ruining whole districts and destroying nearly 30,000 human lives. This tsunami was destructive and it led to loss of life and loss of precious lives and property. The story of Hamaguchi Gohei is the story of a like calamity, is the story of a similar calamity, tsunami, attack of tsunami, which happened long before the era of Meiji on another part of the Japanese coast. Era of Meiji, an era of Japanese history from October 23, 1868 till July 30, 1912. He was an old man at the time of the occurrence that made him famous. Now who is referred to as he here? He is Hamaguchi Gohei. Hamaguchi was an old man when this happened and the attack of tsunami made him famous. He was the most influential resident of the village to which he belonged. He was very powerful, in fact the most powerful resident of the village. He had been for many years its Murausa. What is the meaning of Murausa? Headman. And he was not less liked than respected. The people usually called him Ojisan, which means grandfather. Learn this. But being the richest member of the community, he was sometimes officially referred to as the Choza. He used to advise the smaller farmers about their interests to arbitrate 
the disputes meaning of arbitrate to settle disputes and to advance their money at need and to dispose of their rice for them on the best terms possible. So Hamaguchi Gohe was a responsible person and as a headman, as the most influential person of the village, what role did he play? What did he do for the villagers, for the smaller farmers? He used to advise the smaller farmers about their interests, number one. He helped them to settle their disputes, number two. And he also helped them financially. He used to advance their money at need. So he was kind. He was a kind man. He was helpful. And to dispose of their rice for them on the best terms possible. So Hamaguchi was a good person. Hamaguchi's big thatched farmhouse. He was very rich. He was the richest member of the community. And where did he live? He lived in a big thatched farmhouse which stood on the which stood at the verge. What is the meaning of verge? The margin of a small plateau overlooking a bay. The plateau mostly devoted to rice culture. Rice plantations was hemmed in on three sides by thickly wooded summits. Meaning of hemmed, confined, surrounded and summits highest points. From its outer verge, the land sloped down in a huge green concavity, curved like a concave lens, concavity as if scooped out. What is the meaning of scooped out? Scoop means short-handled deep shovel, as if scooped out to the edge of the water and the whole of this slope some three quarters of a mile long was so terraced as to look when viewed from the open sea like an enormous flight of green steps a simile divided in the center by a narrow so learn the description of the plato and the plato was mostly devoted to rice culture to rice plantations so terraces of rice plantation white zigzag a strip of mountain road 90 thatched dwellings and a shinto temple composing the village proper stood along the curve of the bay and other houses climbed struggling up the slope for some distance on either side of the narrow road leading to the choza's home choza again hamaguchi gohei and the meaning of straggling, lacking, tidiness. One evening, one autumn evening, the season, one autumn evening, Hamaguchi Gohei was looking down from the balcony of his house at some preparations for a merrymaking in the village below. So he used to live on the verge of a small plateau and one day he looked down from the balcony of his house some preparations for a merrymaking was going on in the village below. Some preparations were being made by the villagers below. There had been a very fine rice crop. The reason for these preparations, the reason for the festivity, very fine rice crop. And the peasants were going to celebrate their harvest by a dance in the court of Uji Gami. The old man could see the festival banners, Nobori, fluttering above the roofs of the solitary street, the strings of paper lanterns festooned between bamboo poles, the decorations of the shrine and the brightly colored gathering of the young people. Everyone was very happy. What is the meaning of festooned? tied with ribbons or chains of flowers. So the place was well decorated and young people were enjoying themselves and it was very colorful as well. He had nobody with him that evening but his little grandson who would accompany him to the village below. And this grandson was a lad, was a boy of 10, 
the rest of the household the other family members having gone early to the village there was no one else in the house except hamaguchi gohe and his little grandson he would have accompanied them had he not been feeling less strong than usual after all he is an aged person and sometimes he feels weak he is physically not that strong the day had been oppressive and in spite of a rising breeze there was still in the air that sort of heavy heat which according to the experience of the japanese peasant at certain seasons precedes an earthquake hamaguchi gohe was an experienced person he was an experienced farmer and he observed nature very minutely at certain seasons such oppressive hot and humid weather always precedes an earthquake and presently an earthquake came it was not strong enough it was quite mild to frighten anybody but hamaguchi who had felt hundreds of shocks in his time this shows his experience he has learned from his experience over the years he thought it was queer it was strange a long slow spongy motion so this was not the usual mild earthquake this was something unusual probably it was but the after tremor of some immense seismic action very far away now what is the meaning of seismic related to earthquakes the house crackled and rocked gently several times then all became still again and hamaguchi gohe was trying to observe nature was trying to understand the pattern of things as the quaking as the shaking as the trembling ceased stopped hamaguchi's keen old eyes keen sharp observant old stands for experience eyes were anxiously turned toward the village so he was anxious something was not right he was worried it often happens that the attention of a person gazing fixedly at a particular spot or object is suddenly diverted by the sense of something not knowingly seen at all so you do not see something just unconsciously your mind is suddenly diverted to a second thing by a mere vague feeling of the unfamiliar in that dim outer circle of the unconscious perception which lies beyond the field of clear vision sometimes we are thinking about something and then unconsciously without us being aware we just get diverted to something else thus it chanced that hamaguchi became aware of something unusual in the offing something was wrong in the offing a disaster was perhaps impending he was sud- uh, he was suddenly thinking about an impending catastrophe or an impending disaster he was a little while ago thinking about the earthquake and suddenly his mind was diverted to something else and his mind was diverted to the sea he rose to his feet and looked at the sea it had darkened quite suddenly and it was acting strangely it seemed to be moving against the wind it was running away from the land the ebb of the water so this was very strange this was very threatening and this suggested the impending disaster the impending catastrophe and japan as we have already studied is prone to earthquakes volcano and tsunamis hamaguchi was a man of deep insight he knew the behavior of nature this was the reason that he became apprehensive of the mood of the sea he had never seen such changes in the water of the sea he knew that the tsunami was sure to hit the village he was a man of far sight and he started thinking of a plan which other villagers could not even dream of with a very little time the whole village had noticed the phenomenon what was the phenomenon the receding water the water was receding away from the land 
apparently no one had felt the previous motion of the ground no one had noticed the earthquake the tremors but all were evidently astounded by the movement of the water they were surprised they were taken aback they were running to the beach they were running towards the beach and even beyond the beach to watch it they were going closer and closer to the water no such ebb had been witnessed on that coast within the memory of the living man so this was unprecedented this had never happened before within the memory of living man things never seen before were making apparition once the water started receding people could see unfamiliar spaces of ripped sand and reaches of weed hung rock were left bare and hamaguchi gazed and none of the people below appeared to guess what that monstrous ebb signified they were not that experienced they did not have such deep insight and it was hamaguchi who was feeling the unfamiliarity of the situation who was feeling that something bad was going to happen to them hamaguchi gohe himself had never seen such a thing before but he remembered things told to him in his childhood by his father's father his grandfather and he knew all the traditions of the coast he knew the coast well he understood this is significant he understood his experience he understood what the sea was going to do perhaps he thought of the time needed to send a message to the village what were the villagers doing they were running towards the beach closer and closer towards the water or to get the priests of the buddhist temple on the hill to sound their big bell but it would take very much longer to tell what he might have thought than it took him to think he simply called to his grandson quickly he thought of a plan and he called his grandson he addressed him as tada quick very quick the repetition of the word quick shows the urgency of the situation there was no time to waste hamaguchi had to take immediate action in order to save the lives of the people in order to save the precious lives of the people in order to minimize the destruction caused by the tsunami to human lives light me a torch what was the plan light me a torch taimatsu or pine torches are kept in many coast dwellings houses for use on stormy nights and also for use at and also for use at certain shinto festivals the child tada kindled a torch at once and the old man hurried with it to the fields he ran he was physically weak he was an old man he hurried with it to the fields he did not think about himself where hundreds of rice stacks representing most of his invested capital stood awaiting transportation now what is the meaning of this representing most of his invested capital as a farmer he had his harvest ready and his harvest was awaiting transportation by selling the harvest he would earn huge profits hundreds of rice stacks were placed one after the other and this represented his invested capital he had invested his money in this production approaching what will he do with the rice stacks he had the lighted torch approaching those nearest the verge of the slope he began to apply the torch to them now this is the plan what did he begin to do he began to apply the torch to them the lighted torch hurrying from one to another as quickly as his aged limbs could carry him so he was doing this really fast he had no time to waste the sun dried stalks caught like tinder simile the strengthening sea breeze blew the blaze landward and presently rank behind rank the stacks burst into flame sending skyward columns of smoke that met and mingled into one enormous cloudy whirl tada was astonished 
He was terrified and he ran after his grandfather crying. Ojisan, why? Ojisan, why? Ojisan, why? He was unable to understand the reason why his grandfather had set fire to the rice stalks, to the rice bundles of rice crop. But Hamaguchi did not answer. He was unmoved. He did not reply. The child was confused. Hamaguchi had no time to explain. He was thinking only of the 400 lives in peril. So he wanted to save the precious lives of 400 villagers. And this was his target. He wanted to save the lives of these people, of these victims. For a while, the child stared wildly. The child was innocent and he did not know what was going on. He stared wildly at the blazing rice, then burst into tears. He was scared and ran back to the house, feeling sure that his grandfather had gone mad. He did not get a clear answer. He did not get an explanation. Hamaguchi went on firing stack after stack till he had reached the limit of his field. Then he threw down his torch and waited. So he lit fire to his rice crop. The acolyte of the hill temple, acolyte, the assistant priest, the acolyte of the hill temple observing the blaze set the big bell booming. The acolyte understood that something was wrong. This was some kind of a warning and therefore he set the big bell booming in order to send messages to the villagers. And the people responded to the double appeal, double appeal, number one, the fire, number two, the big bell booming. Hamaguchi watched them hurrying in from the sands and over the beach and up from the village like a swarming of ants in large numbers they were rushing towards the point of fire towards a safe place and to his anxious eyes scarcely faster for the moment seemed terribly long to him the sun was going down the wrinkled bed of the bay and a vast shallow speckled expanse beyond it lay naked to the last orange glow orange the color of the setting sun and the color of the sky when the sun usually sets. And still the sea was fleeing toward the horizon, the retreating waters. Not a good sign. Really, however, Hamaguchi did not have very long to wait before the first party of succor arrived. Succor, help, especially in times of need. A score of agile, very active young peasants arrived who wanted to attack the fire at once so they did not understand why there was a fire and they wanted to extinguish the fire. But the Choza, but Hamaguchi holding out both arms stopped them. Let it burn lads. He commanded, let it be. I want the whole Mura here. I want everyone here. There is great danger. Taihenda, there is great danger. The whole village was coming. All the villagers were coming towards Hamaguchi and Hamaguchi counted. And remember, how many lives did he want to save? 400 lives that were in peril, that were in danger. All the young men and boys were soon on the spot. So he was successful in diverting the attention of the villagers and in bringing them closer to him, bringing them to a safe place. And not a few of the more active women and girls, then came most of the older folk and mothers with babies at their backs and even children, for children could help to pass water and the elders too feeble, too weak to keep up with the first rush could be seen well on their way up the steep ascent, the steep climb, the growing multitude, the large number of people, Still knowing nothing, they had no idea what they were doing, why they were coming away from the sea. They looked alternately in sorrowful wonder at the... Grandfather is mad, I'm afraid of him, sobbed Tada in answer to a number of questions. The people were asking a lot of questions and Tada revealed that Hamaguchi is mad, he set fire to the rice on purpose. I saw him do it, 
As for the rice, cried Hamaguchi, the child tells the truth and he also confesses. I set fire to the rice, are all the people here? So he is concerned about the safety of the people, whether all of them are there. The Kumicho and the heads of families looked about them. They were confused and down the hill and made reply. All are here or very soon will be. So the heads of families looked about them here and there down the hill and they saw that almost all of them are there or very soon they will come up. We cannot understand this thing. What is this thing? Why did you set fire to the rice? Kita shouted the old man at the top of his voice pointing to the open say now if I be mad. He told them to look at the sea and what did they see? Let's read. Through the twilight after the sun setting eastward or looked they all looked eastward and saw at the edge of the dusky horizon a long lean dim line like the shadowing of a coast where no coast ever was a line that thickened as they gazed that broadened as a coastline broadens to the eyes of one approaching it yet incomparably more quickly for that long darkness was the returning sea. A little while ago, the water had receded, exposing the sand and the rocks. And now the sea was returning with huge tidal waves, towering like a cliff and coursing more swiftly. Then the kite follows. Tsunami. The people realized that a tsunami was going to hit the village. Shriek the people, shouted the village people and then all shrieks and all sounds and all par to hear sounds were annihilated by a nameless shock nameless shock heavier than any thunder as the colossal swell as the enormous tidal waves smote the shore with a weight that sent a shudder shiver through the hills and with a foam burst like a blaze of sheet lightning it was a tsunami attack. A huge tsunami had come and hit the village. After this, what happens? Then for an instant, nothing was visible but a storm of spray rushing up the slope like a cloud and the people scattered back in panic from the mere menace of it. From the mere danger of the tsunami. When they looked again, they saw a white horror of sea raving over the place, raving, talking furiously. That means the water was there all over the place of their homes. It drew back roaring and tearing out the bowels of the land as it went. The destruction twice, thrice, five times the sea struck and ebbed, but each time with lesser surges, then it returned to its ancient bed, the sea, and stayed still raging as after a typhoon. On the plateau for a time, there was no word spoken. Everyone was stunned and speechless. All stared speechlessly at the desolation beneath. The water had gone away. The waves had all gone away. But what was left behind? Desolation, destruction, the ghastliness. The ugliness of hurled rock and naked riven cliff. The bewilderment of scooped up deep sea rack and shingle shot over the empty site of dwelling and temple. The village was not. The village was not there. Everything was washed away. The greater part of the fields were not. The fields, the crops, everything was gone. Even the terraces had ceased to exist. The rice plantation terraces were not there. And of all the homes that had been about the bay, there remained nothing recognizable except two straw roofs tossing madly in the offing. The after terror of the death escaped and the stupefaction of the general loss kept all lips dumb. 
they were stupefied they were dumbfounded speechless to see the general loss the destruction to life and property kept all lips dumb until the voice of hamaguchi was heard again observing gently hamaguchi was a humble person that was why i set fire to the rice the explanation he their chosa now stood among them almost as poor as the poorest he did not have his rice stacks and he was as poor as the poorest his invested capital was gone and he was just like any other poor villager his wealth was gone but he had saved 400 lives by sacrifice so this is the theme he was the savior he was a living god god is the savior of humanity similarly hamaguchi gohe is the savior of these villagers he saved 400 lives and this showed his sacrifice his selfless action his presence of mind and his greatness little tada ran to him and caught his hand he was really ashamed of himself he realized his mistake after all he is just an innocent child and asks forgiveness for having said such naughty things what naughty things that his grandfather was mad whereupon the people woke up to the knowledge of why they were alive they realized the people realized why they were alive who was instrumental in saving them and began to wonder at the simple unselfish foresight that had saved them this action was a selfless action unselfish action and the headmen prostrated themselves in the dust before hamaguchi gohe as a token of respect and the people after them prostrate means lying face down with respect they paid their respect to hamaguchi gohe hamaguchi saved them and they were thankful they were grateful then the old man wept a little he was emotional the impassive choza suddenly wept a little why partly because he was happy he was joyful and partly because he was an aged and weak and had been sorely tired so he was exhausted my house remains such a kind man even after doing all these things even after sacrificing everything he is so caring and he is so kind that he says my house remains he said as soon as he could find words as soon as he could control his emotions he told the villagers that he had his house automatically caressing tadas brown cheeks the warmth and affection and there is room for many and why did he mention about his farm house he wanted to give shelter to the victims really such a good person such a kind person really a living god also the temple on the hill stands his presence of mind he is wise and he finds a possible solution he will open the doors of his own farm house and he also tells them that there is a temple the shinto temple go there and take shelter there is shelter there for the others then he led the way to his house and the people cried and shouted the people were emotional they wanted to thank hamaguchi gohe the period of distress was long the tsunami was gone the tsunami had destroyed the whole village and the destruction was so immense that the period of distress suffering was long because in those days there were no means of quick communication between district and district and the help needed had to be sent from far away the rehabilitation would take time but when better times came the people did not forget their debt to hamaguchi gohe why were they indebted because hamaguchi had saved their lives they could not make him rich they were poor so how could they make him rich 
nor would he have suffered them to do so, and Hamaguchi too would not have liked it, even had it been possible. He would not have accepted money from the villagers, even if they could afford to help him financially. Moreover, gifts could never have sufficed as an expression of their reverential feeling towards him. So they respected him a lot, for they believed that the ghost within him was divine, the spirit, his soul was divine. So they declared him a god and thereafter called him Hamaguchi Daimojin, thinking they could give him no greater honor. So what was the honor? This title. And truly, no greater honor in any country could be given to a mortal man. He was still living and he was called a god. He was named a god. And when they rebuilt the village, they built a temple to the spirit of him. How did they express their gratitude? By building a temple to the spirit of him and fixed above the front of it a tablet bearing his name in Chinese text of gold and they worshipped him there, a living God. He was still alive and he had a temple with prayer and with offerings. How he felt about it, I cannot say. I know only that he continued to live in his old thatched home upon the hill with his children and his children's children, just as humanly and simply as before. He was a good person, he was kind, he was caring, he was responsible, and he was also very humble. He was not at all proud. While his soul was being worshipped in the shrine below, he was still living and therefore the title, a living God. Number one, he acted as a savior. And number two, there was a temple devoted to the spirit of him. And the soul was being worshipped in the shrine below. A hundred years and more he has been dead, but his temple is still there. They tell me, they tell the narrator, still stands and the people still pray to the ghost of the good old farmer, to Hamaguchi, Gohei's ghost, spirit, to help them in time of fear or trouble. They pray to him for courage and strength. They asked a Japanese philosopher and friend to explain to me how the peasants could rationally, logically imagine the spirit of, let me just turn the page, of Hamaguchi in one place while his living body was in another. Also, I inquired whether it was only one of his souls which they had worshipped during his life and whether they imagined that particular soul to have detached itself from the rest to receive homage. The peasants, my friend answered, think of the mind or spirit of a person as something which even during life can be in many places at the same instant. The Japanese belief. Such an idea is, of course, quite different from the Western ideas about the soul. So the narrator had Western ideas about the soul and the Japanese have a different idea about the soul. Any more rational? I mischievously asked. Well, he responded with a Buddhist smile. If we accept the doctrine of the unity of all mind, the idea of the Japanese peasant would appear to contain at least some adumbration of truth. I could not say so much for your Western notions about the soul. Two contrasting beliefs, the Western notion about the soul and the Japanese notion about the soul. Here is the end of this chapter. Learn the character analysis of Hamaguchi Gohei and also the appropriateness of the title.